Hello everybody, welcome to Statistics and Theory. In this demonstration, I'm going to present how to calculate the t-value for a correlation analysis. In most of the software packages that are available in the market, uh, or free software packages like the one that I'm using, which is Jamovi, uh, we always calculate the p-value, as you can see in this window, associated with the Pearson correlations or other types of correlations, and uh, based on the p-value and also the uh, correlation statistic itself, we will decide whether the correlation is uh, statistically significant or not. Can you see this? This is the p-value and this is the uh, Pearson correlation. Nevertheless, uh, there is another step between calculating the uh, uh, Pearson correlation itself and the p-value, and that's the calculation of t, which is... Uh, almost always missing in most of these software packages and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how you can do that. So let's uh, first of all open the data set that I have uh, through Jamovi. It's one of the data sets that has been incorporated into Jamovi. So go to this uh, hamburger menu on the left corner and click on open, go to uh, uh, data library and in the data library uh, click on um, path analysis and under Path Analysis, click on Path J Data. It's one of the data uh, sets that I just really randomly selected for this demonstration. And then you click on this, and when it's opened, uh, you will see a window like this. So it's, since I've already done this analysis, let me go down further down to another window where we can... Uh, we can uh, here run the analysis once again together. I want to look into the correlation between Y1 and X1. Uh, and in this uh, scenario, I want to figure out, uh, number one, what is the correlation coefficient between the two, and number two, what is the t-value associated with that correlation coefficient, and then finally uh, look at a, a t-distribution table uh, to figure out whether uh, the t-value uh, is statistically significant or not. So I uh, replicated the results that I originally displayed. Can you see uh, the, the window here? The Pearson correlation index is 0 0.797, and the degrees of freedom is 98. Degrees of freedom in a correlation analysis is, uh, is estimated by subtracting 2 from the entire sample size. And we know that the sample size in this uh, data set is 100. So 100 minus 2 is 98. That's the degrees of freedom in this correlation analysis. And the associated p-value, which is automatically estimated by the software itself, is less than 0.001, which is pretty small, and which indicates that this correlation is uh, extremely significant. And uh, therefore, uh, the uh, associations between the two variables is not due to chance. So I'm this is also the um, the uh, visual representation of the correlations. You see that there is a very nice um, kind of tight uh, association between the two variables as indicated by this uh, correlation uh, line or the regression line between them. The dots are a bit scattered a little bit in the, in the middle, but uh, they're mostly closely and tightly uh, uh, aligned along the line. All right, so this is the correlation. Now let's go through the process of estimating the t-value, and I've already made some slides here for you. In order to estimate a, a uh, t-value for a correlation index, the first thing we need to do is to run the correlation analysis, which I've already done, and as you saw that. Then, of course, the second step is to estimate the t-value, and finally, we've got to find out the associated p-value associated to the t, and then um, um, decide whether uh, the t-value is statistically significant or not. In order to do this, we need, as I mentioned, to look at a t-distribution table. All right, so this is uh, the correlation. Just wanted to make sure that you remember that the um, correlation stat is this. And, of course, the degrees of freedom is this. So these are the two important statistics that we need to keep in mind, 0 0.797 and 98, respectively. All right, so here is the formula by which you can estimate the t-value. Uh, I'd like to take you through this uh, formula quickly and uh, demonstrate how you can um, estimate the 
the numerator, this side, and the denominator, which is this part of the equation. So first things first, n minus 2, as we have already seen, equals 100, which is a sample size, n stands for sample size, minus 2, and it gives us 98. So we already computed this component here. Now, uh, for 98, we also need to get the root square of it. The root square of 98 equals, I have a calculator, just use your calculator on your um, computer, and you can easily estimate these. 98, and this is the root square sign. Um, 98, um, the root square is uh, has a lot of decimal values. I'm going to just put down uh, three of these decimal values. 9.899, so that's just good enough really for this demonstration. 9.899. All right, now in order to estimate the um, the uh, numerator here, I got to um, uh, get my r square values, which is 0 0.797, as I showed before, times this value, which is the root square of uh, 98, times 9.899, which gives me, let's see what we can get. I'm going to go back to the calculator and um, multiply uh, the, the value by 0.797 to get a huge number. It's, uh, I mean, a small number really, but with, with a lot of decimals. So I'm going to uh, write it down up to three decimal values. 7.889. That's pretty easy, 7.889. So this is my denominator, uh, sorry, uh, my, num my numerator. Now, what about the denominator? The denominator is uh, calculated by 1 minus um, r squared and then the root, root squared of whatever you will get. First of all, let's get started with estimating this r squared value. Um, so I'm going to go back to my calculator and um, clean it all, clean. Uh, so, 0.797, which is r, that's the value of my Pearson correlation, as you recall. Now I've got to uh, multiply it by itself to get um, uh, the value r squared. So, I actually, I already have a button here. So if you click on x squared, you'll get the amount. So the r squared value in this equation is 0 0.635209. So I'm going to write down just up to three decimal values, uh, 0 0.635. So r squared between x and y. You don't even need to write x and y, but since I have it in the formula, I'm going to replicate it in exactly the same way. R squared is uh, 0 0.6, oops, I forgot, 6 what? Uh, 635. 635. Awesome. Now, we need to subtract 1 from this value to get um, a, um, this part of the, uh, the denominator. Well, so let's do this. Uh, the best thing for me to do is to um, copy this value, then clean it, then 1 minus, I understand this is an awkward way of doing it, but anyway, this is how I do things. So my, 1 minus uh, 0 0.635209, and it gives me this value. So, um, 1 minus r squared is this value. Now, the, the last thing that I need to do is to get its root squared. Can you see with the radical sign? The radical sign indicates that we need a root square as well. So, just like what I did for the uh, numerator, for the denominator, I also need to click on this button to get uh, the value. So, click, and there we go. 0 0.603, etc. So, uh, the new, uh, the denominator 1 minus r squared xy 
equals 0 0.3 um, excuse me see my uh, working memory doesn't work today 6 um, 0, 3, 6, 0, 3. Now I have the numerator and also the denominator and what I need to, to do is to get uh, to plug them into the formula to get the t value. So to plug them into the formula I write 7.889 over 0 0.603 and it, it gives me let's see what's, what we'll get Okay, so why not uh, copying everything, because this is obviously more accurate than the three decimal values that I have recorded there. So I'm going to clean everything and write the other value down. Now let me just push this aside so you can see what I'm doing. It's 7.889, right? 889 divided by this value, but I have a more um, accurate value, which was this long value, which returns 13.06. Well, let me write this down. 13.06 uh, with more decimal values, but this is pretty good enough because this t value is already really large, and I, uh, I almost have no doubt that this p value is statistically significant, but um, we can't stop here because we need to do the the one one last thing. Um, so let's keep this in mind. Thirteen point zero six. Now I'm I'm going to move to uh, the next step, finding the associated p value in a t distribution table. We don't have a t distribution table here. We got to go to one of these websites where um, the t distribution tables are available. I've chosen this website. This is uh, cool because I can easily find the degrees of freedom of 100 or 98 and then do the rest of the analysis. I will leave this website for you, but this is not the only available website, like I said. I'll leave the link in, in the comment section for you so you can also open it. Um, I have already uh, copied and pasted into this slide. Uh, the thing is, uh, we need to find the degrees of freedom, I hope you can see this, degrees of freedom of our own study, which in this case was 98, if you recall, because our sample size was 100, 100 minus 2, we got the degrees of freedom of 98, and then we move all the way down from this side to get to the degrees of freedom 98. Eight. But unfortunately, we don't exactly find 98. That's fine. In many of these tables, we don't, you don't exactly find your degrees of freedom. So what do we do? We will choose the, the, uh, the nearest degrees of freedom to your sample, which in this case is 100. This is good enough for me. So 100, I've already found that degrees of freedom for myself. That's one thing. Now, I also need to read this table uh, horizontally, not only vertically as I did, but also horizontally. In um, uh, um, on this um, on the uh, upper row, right here, you see that there are t values, critical t values. Okay, Cri two types of critical t values. One type is called one tail, the other one is called is called two tail. I'll get back to these two and I'll explain it on this graph later, but. Uh, let's just stick with analysis at this time. So for I, I'm looking for two tails uh, uh, t values, critical t values, and this gives me more confidence. In other words, so the two tails p uh, t values um, uh, with the alpha level associated uh, with it of uh, 0 0.05, and this is it, 0 0.05. Because the alpha level is usually set at 0 0.05, sometimes 0 0.01, even sometimes 0 0.0001. And some people are more liberal and they are fine with an alpha level of 0 0.1. And if that w works for you, and if you think you can justify and convince your readers, go ahead and choose 0 0.1, which is just the adjacent cell here. But for this demonstration, actually, I don't want to choose this one, as I said. So 0 0.0. Five. So let's move all the way down to find the associated t value, which is one point. So the critical p value, critical 
uh, sorry, critical t value, not p value. Uh, critical t value equals 1.984. And we already know that our own t value, the, the t value that we estimated, is 13.0706, something like that. Excuse me, let me go back to my previous slide. Uh, 0.6, okay. 0 0.6. Uh, I wasn't off by too much. So that's it. And it's very obvious that 13.06 uh, is much larger than 1.984. Uh, 1 uh, which in this case uh, gives us enough evidence, uh, strong enough evidence, that our t value is statistically significant. Significant. In other words, um, our correlation statistic of 0 0.797, as you recall, is statistically significant with a p with a t value of this uh, because this t value is larger than the critical t value which is 1.984 remember that this critical t value is not generated in the in most of the software that you work with and in order to find it out you you, you need to go to uh you know uh, one of these websites where you can find a t distribution table and find it in the in the way that I discussed. The last thing I wanted to say is that the t itself has a distribution like this, the, the all those t values that you could estimate, like this here on top, and it looks like a normal distribution, but it's not exactly a normal distribution. Actually, it's uh, something uh, slightly different from a normal distribution. So when we are looking for a critical uh, t value you are looking for um, those t values that uh, fall on these sites uh, here or on the lower end of the spectrum or the the distribution uh, under th this part of the tail uh, and if they fall here we usually uh, we, we we say that um, the the t value that we have estimated is larger than the critical t. For example, the critical t here is, this is a critical t here, and this is another critical t. So we say that it's larger than the critical t value, and as a result, um, our estimated t value is statistically significant, which indicates that the correlation that we estimated is statistically significant. Um, in conclusion, everybody, um, in order to figure out whether the correlation statistic that we have computed is significant or not, statistically speaking, we need to calculate a t value associated with it. And after uh, calculating the t value, we need to go through this table of t distribution, find the critical t, and compare our t value with the critical t value, uh, and then decide whether uh, our t value is larger than the critical t value. And if it is larger than, yes, our correlation statistic is statistically significant. I hope you find this video useful and if you do please give it a like. I'm going to make more videos about similar concepts and I will mostly focus on what is under the hood uh, when we are for example doing an ANOVA or a t-test etc. Uh, meaning I will focus on the statistical analyses uh, rather than just the output of the software. Thank you very much uh, and have a great day.